Hello friends, let's get back to a little bit of education now, shall we? The pentatonic scale. Everybody's always talking about the pentatonic scale. Why is that? You've heard the pentatonic scale a million times. How many times have you heard stuff like that? Millions. In fact, it's one of the most popular, if not the most popular scale we tend to hear in Western music. Okay? Okay? But when we hear the pentatonic scale, how does it sound? Okay? How does it sound when you hear the pentatonic scale? A lot of people might say, well, it sounds kind of bluesy. Yeah, it sounds, you know, it's a staple for rock and blues for sure. But apparently, now I'm not a historian, I'm not a historian, but the roots of the pentatonic scale way, go way back to the Far East, hundreds, hundreds of years ago. A lot of people would be like, China, Mongolia, Japan, what are you talking about? Well, if we just listen to the way we play the scale, if we play it a little differently, Kind of get that sound out of it with the intervals and of course i'd be remiss if i didn't show you the most famous pentatonic lick of all time but the pentatonic scale let's go back right to beginning let's go back right to basics and talk about it we'll look at it from a few different perspectives maybe a beginner perspective an intermediate perspective and more advanced perspective to get a bit more mileage out of this scale Maybe in some ways that some of you guys haven't thought of. So first and foremost, penta. What does that mean, penta? Penta, okay? I've alluded to this in other videos, but penta, right? What's that building, big building in the United States that controls the military? The Pentagon. You know, if you watch some really silly, cheesy movies back in the 80s about Satan, you'd see about pentagrams. Penta, what does that mean? It means five. Five. So when you hear the term pentatonic, it means there's five notes. And the scale. So we know pentatonic means five, five notes. Now for beginners, before we even get to this, where how beginners start to learn the scale, there's five box positions that people learn and then you learn how to connect them. It's almost like Lego after a while. But one of the things that I find very disturbing and one of the things that you know inspired me to create this channel, one of many things, was when I see people like they'll say, well, but where do those notes come from? And they'll be like, well, I don't know. It's just that's where it is, whatever. So, you know, there'll always be this on. There'll always be this debate about learning theory or not. And believe me, you want to know some theory. Do you, do you not want to know where things come from and how things work? Come on, that's what theory is. And it's really not rocket science. It's maybe it's just how it's explained to you or how it's interpreted. But for the most part, for the pentatonic scale, we're going to look at the two main ones. We have the minor pentatonic, the major. Okay. Minor pentatonic, when am I going to use that? Well, when I'm going to rock out, playing over minor chord progressions, playing over something really, you know, I might use it also over something that's very sad. Again, minor. Major pentatonic scale, where am I going to use that? Well, over something that's a little more happy. When I think of the major pentatonic scale, I think of the Allman Brothers. When I think of country music, that's another time where I really pull out my major pentatonic licks, is if I'm playing a lot of country music. You know, a good example of that would be someone like Keith Urban. A lot of his solos he uses the major pentatonic scale. Okay, so, but where does this stuff come from? Where does it come from? I'm asking you now, okay? Where does this stuff come from? Well, if we want the E minor pentatonic scale. 
Okay, everything comes from the major scale. So, again, my first two steps in understanding theory, my first two steps, you gotta learn the chromatic scale, meaning learning the notes on the guitar. Second step, you gotta learn the major scale. If you guys don't know this, if you're absolutely, if, if whether it's been like this for you for years or you're just kind of getting into it now, I have a couple of videos that break down these basic theoretical steps very, very easily. Not a big deal. Check them out. So if we want to know the notes for the E minor pentatonic, first we have to write out the E major scale, okay? Everything comes from the major scale. If you're not sure how to do this, I cover this in previous videos. Short videos, very right to the point, very easy to understand, okay? We're going to write the numbers 1 to 8. Okay. Major scale formula. We're going to start on E. And then our major scale formula goes whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay. So E major scale goes E, whole step to F sharp. Whole step to G sharp, half step to A, whole step to B, whole step to C sharp, whole, whole step to D sharp, half step brings us back to E. Okay? E, ma e minor pentatonic scale formula goes E minor pentatonic, it goes root, flat third, fourth, fifth, flat seven. So, we want the E minor pentatonic. E major scale is our reference point. We have a first, E. We have a flat third, G, okay? Which, if any formula has a flat third, that's what makes it minor, okay? You're gonna take the third degree and lower it a half step, okay? So we have E, then we have G, our fourth degree is A, fifth degree is B, and then we have our flat seven, so we're gonna take, this is our reference point, we're gonna take our seven, D sharp, and lower to half step, which make, brings it D, brings us down to D, okay? So if anyone ever asks, our notes in our E minor pentatonic are E, G, A, B, D, okay? Now the way people start off learning this, there's five pentatonic positions, okay? The first one people tend to learn is what's called the root position, they're starting on the root note. So they got this kind of thing going on. I'm using proper position playing, okay? We're in the 12th position, so anything on the 12th fret belongs to my first finger, anything on the 13th belongs to my middle, anything on the 14th belongs to my third, anything on the 15th belongs to my pinky, folks. Okay, so our root position, okay? This is the very first fingering of the pentatonic that everyone learns, okay? 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15. Okay? So people tend to work on that scale, fingering. I can't tell you back in the late 80s how many episodes of Jerry Springer I would watch, film them, record them on VCR, and I would play that over and over. But now, okay, that's great. You can play it in one position, okay? But you want to learn all the other four, posi four box positions so you can learn it all over the neck. So I'm going to spell them out for you really here. I'm going to spell them out for you here. And I often tell students, you know, take a few days, get comfortable with the one position, and then add another position, okay? The next one down, okay? It's very symmetrical, easy to remember. It goes 10, 12, 10, 12, 9, 12, 9, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12. That position will always be before the root position. So we have a root position. Position before. So once you get comfortable with the root position, you have it memorized, okay? Go to the position before, okay? Position before that, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9, 7, 9, 8, 10, 7, 10, okay? It's almost similar to the root position, just a little different. When you're starting out on the guitar, you have to learn all these positions over and over. It's like you're implanting them. I used to teach a science teacher. He's retired now, and he's done very well with his music and his playing. Shout out to you, Bill. 
Uh, he used to say, well, when I demonstrate this type of thing to him, especially when we get into more advanced scales of theoretical concepts, it's well, easy for you to say it's brain stem for you, meaning I've gone over it so many times, it's in my brain stem. So you kind of want to brain stem it, you know what I'm saying? So now, instead of just being stuck playing in the one position, okay, we know three positions. So now when I'm playing on the guitar neck, now I know it on this part of the neck. What I would always recommend, again, for a lot of students that are just coming up learning this stuff, pick one box shape, one position, drill it over and over for a week. Then, when you're comfortable, you're, you know you have it memorized, add another one the next week, add another one the next week. Okay, we're training our fingers, okay? So it's just, it just becomes natural for us. Now let's go down to the next position, okay? Now we're down in the fifth fret. So this is all an E minor, okay? Now we're in the fifth fret, okay? We have this, okay? It's kind of, this one positions, it's a little unusual, but it's easy to remember too because the first three on the first, the first things that you're gonna play on the first three strings are the same. Five, seven, five, seven, five, seven. Four, seven. So I'm using my first finger of my pinky. Now I'm using my, the next string I'm gonna go five, eight. Okay, so now I'm kind of soloing using this much of the guitar neck. When you get the hang of it and you can move between the scales. We'll get to more of that in a little bit. Now, one more position, which brings us up to five. So I have three, five, two, five, two, five, two, four, three, five, three, five. Now I have this much of the neck covered. Now, so people might say, okay, that's good, man. But now what do you want to do when you go higher on the neck? Well, it's, it's really simple, actually. You take this, the position's down here, and you just play an octave higher. So that is a basic way of learning the pentatonic scale, five shapes. And once you learn them and you move them into different keys, they just shift back and forth depending on the key. So we have the E minor pentatonic. We, know, we now know where the notes come from. It's not a big mystery, like someone just threw them up in the air. E, G, A, B, D, okay? So this is an example of playing the E minor pentatonic scale all over the five positions we just went through. If you could, maestro. Let's throw in a new observation here because we talked about the minor pentatonic scale, E minor, okay? But if we look here, um, we also have a G major pentatonic scale and they actually share the same fingering. It's kind of interesting. Okay, let's take a look at this. So, G major pentatonic, okay? Formula, major pentatonic, first, second, third, Fifth, sixth, okay? So what does this mean? Well, again, everything is referenced against the major scale. So if we know the G major scale, okay? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, okay? Major scale, we're gonna write it out in G. What's our formula? You guys have this memorized. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. All right, whole step up from G is A, whole step up from A is B, C, D, E, F sharp, and a half step brings us back to G. So now if we apply the formula, we have first degree, so G. We have our second, A. Our third, B. Our fifth is D. And our sixth degree is E. So it's basically the same notes as the E minor pentatonic, but in a different order. 
but they're, they're the same scale, but they're not the same scale, okay? So again, if you memorize all those fingerings, remember, you don't just, you don't just know the E minor pentatonic, you also know the fingerings for the G major pentatonic. Now, if you look at the G major scale, right, okay, the relative minor is the sixth degree. So you can also learn to say, okay, the major pentatonic, and then I know the sixth degree of the major scale is the relative minor. I know that pentatonic scale too. A lot of different ways you can look at it. So when I played, demonstrated the fingerings for the E minor pentatonic scale, it's over an E minor chord progression, okay? It sounded sad, a little bit rocking, sad, okay? So now I'm gonna demonstrate the G major pentatonic in all five positions. Some people might say, well, what scale was that? Was it the G, mi G major or E minor? Well, what dictates the key we were using is the backing track, okay? So the first one where it's kind of sad sounding, a little bit rocking, I was using an E minor backing track, strictly an E minor chord, so it's referencing against an E minor. The backing track is saying, this is the key we're in, my friends. Now there, I was using a G major backing track, and it's saying, hey, we're in the key of G major. So the G major pentatonic has a happier sound to it, the minor, a little bit more sad, a little bit more rocking maybe, okay? So now, for a lot of people, so for beginners, people getting used to that, you know, we have our three tenets of becoming a good guitar player. Number one is technique, getting your fingers to be able to do what you want them to do. Number two, theoretical knowledge, understanding what the hell it is you're doing. And number three is application, right? So a lot of my students, when we get going on this, we get deeper into some of the theory and the target notes that they should be trying to hit uh, and being aware of, but I like to get them soloing over backing tracks relatively quickly. But first, you gotta burn those positions into your mind. Now, for a lot of people that are kind of like, okay, so I've learned the positions, but I'm still feeling boxy when I'm playing, I say, okay, cool. I'll do things, I'll mess with my students. And I'll say, okay, now you're gonna solo and improvise, but only play the G major pentatonic scale on high E string. Improvise, come up with something. Or use the E minor pentatonic sound, I might say, on the D string, and on the D string only, right? So that is another way of visioning the guitar neck and the fretboard in a way of combining the scales but not thinking always box shapes, box shapes. Sometimes too, it's like we'll take, we'll come up with licks on the, on, we'll pick two different strings on the scale, right? Um, so we're doing this kind of thing here, like. So when you're picking on the adjacent strings going back and forth, we'll do things to break out of the box. You might be just say, okay, let's just do slides, slides in and out of the different positions, right? That kind of stuff. All kinds of different stuff like that. So we'll do a lot of different concepts like that as people are starting to get the hang of that as well when they're soloing. Now, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about the blues scale, because they have a very interesting uh, relationship with the pentatonic scale. So what does this mean when you're, so what does this mean? Okay, well, the blues scale is basically a hexatonic scale. You're taking a pentatonic scale, adding another note. So really, it's really not a big deal, okay? People, you know, one of the, the big villains of people that are starting it is we overthink things, okay? Now, look at me. Do I look like an intellectual? Well, I really overthought things starting out on the guitar. That was my worst enemy. Made things a lot harder than they had to be. But if we look at the E minor blues and the G major blues, one little adding them to their formulas, okay? So if we look here, we have uh, first flat third fourth, flat fifth, fifth flat seventh for the minor blues scale. And also for the major blues scale, we have first, second, Flat third, third, fifth, sixth. Same deal, we write out their major scale, we get the notes, that's how it works. If you don't know this, people will always say, do I need theory as a board Of course it is. Having a knowledge of theory is very important. Man, are you kidding me? 
you know how embarrassing it is when you're lost and not knowing how something works or what people are talking about and you're sitting there going, I don't know. Really? Of course theory is important. You want to know what you're doing. You want to understand how music works. Okay? So basically if we look at it, okay, if we had the flat five note for the E minor blues or the flat third note for the G major blues, it's B flat. It's the same note. So when people are learning, now for beginners, I get them to learn the pentatonic scale. We don't overwhelm folks. And then we work on the hexatonic part of the blues scale. Well, they're already familiar with this. So we're just going to add the blue note. So you just add the blue note in each one of the positions. I, I don't really stop and go, okay, now I'm going to jump to the blues scale, or they're very, you know, interusable. Well, they're almost the same scale, so I'm kind of flying in and out between both of them, right? Once you get comfortable with the blues scale, just learn the blue note in each one of the positions, and you're off to the races, okay? So that is a quick look at the blues scale. So an advanced concept that sometimes people don't look at that I teach is getting mileage out of things, okay? So if we look at the E minor pentatonic scale, okay? E, G, A, B, D. Works great over E minor, the chord E minor, uh, minor seventh chords, uh, minor chord, E minor chord progressions, a lot of them. Uh, the G major pentatonic, of course, would work great with the G major chord, uh, different major chord progressions. Uh, and that's great for E minor and G. But here's a concept. If we go to another note in the scale, let's look at A, okay? This is like a little bit of a more advanced deep dive here, okay? Let me just adjust this so we don't have any glare. So let's start at the A major scale. The major scale is so important, guys. Everything comes from the major scale, my friends. Two, three, four. Always ready with the numbers one to eight. Don't do that. Okay, now, so we have A. What's our major scale formula? You guys know it, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, okay? A, whole step to B, whole step to C sharp, okay? Whole step to D, that doesn't look like a D, but E, E, F sharp, G sharp. Looks like I'm writing hieroglyphics here, man. Okay, so if we take the notes that we have left over from the uh, pentatonic scale, the E minor pentatonic, G major pentatonic, we start in the A. We have a first, we have a second. We don't have a third. We don't have a third, guys. Okay, you know, you hear what I'm saying? Okay, now this hieroglyphic here, I'm actually going to write it in properly. It's a D. Okay, but we do have a fourth. Okay, we do have. Fifth, E. And we also have, over here, we have a flat seven, G. Okay. So interestingly, what could we use this over for playing? We don't have a minor. We don't have something. We don't have a third or a flat third designating major or minor, but we have uh, we have a second, we've got a fourth, fifth, flat seven. So if we look at the formula for a suspended chord, so we'll do this in A, okay? An A sus two chord, or an A sus four, it would work, okay? We have first, second, fifth. The notes in that chord, first, second, fourth. So for a lot of you guys that want to get a bit more mileage out of your pentatonics, this is one thing. We have lots of videos to come, guys. Lots of new stuff we're going to talk about. Let's get that glare off that screen right away. Okay. So if you know your E minor pentatonic, G major pentatonic, okay, get a backing track of, uh, you know, if you're jamming around with a buddy, say, hey, play, uh, just give me something, you know, an A sus 2 or suspend second or an A sus 4 or a combination thereof of the two and try soloing with the same notes, right? 
So you can call it whatever you want. Third mode of the minor pentatonic scale. Okay, in this case we're doing A, whatever you want to call it. But that's a way of thinking that a lot of guitar players don't think. It's getting more mileage out of a out of something that they already know. That's another concept you don't see a lot of people always doing. So again, minor pentatonic. This is our first real lecture on the pentatonic. So we covered the minor pentatonic, where it comes from, how to learn it all over the guitar neck. I would recommend you guys learn it E minor and G major pentatonic fingerings. Then get comfortable with the blues fingerings, adding the blue note. And you want to uh, apply. You want to start soloing over some backing tracks. If you look back on my YouTube channel, I've got some backing tracks, and some real basic ones, they're not fancy. You don't want them to be confusing or overwhelming for beginners or people that are new to soloing. And uh, you know, for the more advanced players, take the notes of the E minor, G major pentatonic, but let's put key, let's put A as the key root. And let's solo over some A suspended second or some suspended fourth chords. See what we can come up with. Some new ideas will be a little more fresh for you. Friends, remember, keep the comments and suggestions coming. Remember, check out my Patreon, the price of a cup of coffee a month. You can see all the stuff we're doing. You can watch the videos that you're not going to see on YouTube. And uh, remember, practice hard, but practice smart. We'll see you soon.